it's time to go back to the Henge and take a look at where all these underground tunnels, many of them were built for the mine way before the Second World War, are actually going. We've heard for years about this elaborate, mile-long underground tunnel system leading between the Riese projects and other affiliated mines. We know that Project Riese was not affiliated with the Molke mine or the Henge as such, but we do know the entire area is honeycombed with tunnels in various directions for an untold amount of miles. Many of them built before the war, some of them extended and used during. We're still trying to piece this together. Not far from the Henge or the Lisa Project tunnel system allocated to Himmler, only 1700 meters away, is an old mining tunnel that were leading generally in the direction of the Henge. We're going to start there because it's one of those we have not explored and of course it's full of water. You know, when I came to see you in Poland, I thought we were going to go to a restaurant or something. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we no, are going to go underground. And maybe there's going to be a restaurant there. Woohoo! And it's actually less wet inside. <laughs> we are lucky anyway, my friend, because the water could be up to this level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, there is. Because of the rain, there is so much uh, um, this, uh, fog inside that you actually cannot look it so far. So this was a utility tunnel? Uh, that's still unknown, because this is like built before the Second World War. And this was maybe some kind of transportation tunnel for this big mine of Wenceslaus. Uh, because it heads to this direction, but I would need a, like, a map with the uh, highness to see if it actually fits the story. Of course, I had many theories that it was supposed to transport the ammunition from this complex we saw today is, uh, a little bit earlier, yeah. that where, the, they were, where they could actually produce the ammunition. And this one was to trans uh, transfer it to somewhere else, but it makes no sense to do, to do that. So it's just an underground complex that's from the 20th century and I can only assume it was made for transportation of the oil from this big mine. But it would be a good place for the Germans during the war to for shelters if there's ever... Yes, it was not another part then, <laughs> of, course. of course. And soon we are going to see a room on the right, actually it's... A well, but the top, I can actually see almost nothing. Well, the temperature outside matches the inside. Yeah. Yeah. So. Was there a mini rail or anything? Yes, there was. There was. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, see I the parts of it uh, laying uh, against the wall. Yeah, I can see the platform you're sort of standing on. It. So, I don't know why is it that small. Were the people not that tall 100 years ago or the other reason? But I mean, this was an arm, this was a serious door. Yeah, you will see why. Ah, this is where the explosives were. Yes, that's the storage for explosives. That also explains the empty niche in front of us, so that if there will be an explosion, it will, it will go this direction. Yes. The side. It would be caught by that. So this was definitely used for the mine or for, yeah. for later. That means at the beginning, yeah? Yeah. It collapsed in a couple of places. And it's hard to say if the collapse was like artificial or not. And it's kind of hard to date the collapse, I guess. Yes, yes. So the doors were closed. And when you wanted some explosives, you were receiving them through this window. Yeah. Oh, you can see the water level, it would be really fun to go there in the water like that. Yeah, I get that. Uh, well, I volunteered for that in order. This is a rope. This is big. Just to hold explosives. You see? 
did that. Yeah, they were made to gather the uh, the water from the from the wood so that it doesn't drop on the explosives. Yeah. And this one is Kuchin uh, Kama. So that was the place where the, the ignition, I think, if I translated it correctly. Yeah. Another room like that, and I actually know a girl who made to fit in and walk up, but the chimney was uh, locked. So I said to her, "You won't make it." Well, am I not going to make it? Hold my beer. <laughs> and she did it in this suit. I'm not even going to ask why you were drinking with a girl wearing that suit, but that seems like a personal thing. Tunnel of some kind of coal mine. Yeah. Oh, okay, there are two there. behind the collapse and what was behind the collapse that's what we don't know. I'm sure that if somebody would properly focus and look uh, in the, into the archives and try to find the map of this mine from behind before the war then he would probably uh, find the reason why was it good. Yeah but um, this was how far are we away from the uh, from the hinge and and uh, the? Uh... Yeah, not not that much. We are still in this area of this mining field. Yeah, we are. Because this mining field was like 60 kilometers big, square kilometers, and we are like maybe three, four, maybe five kilometers in a straight line away from those. So there's a lot of room to hide stuff here. Yes. There's so many tunnels and so many. That's been here for so many years. They've been mining here since what, 1800. Uh, yes. Yeah. Those are the places where you can hide if the train is coming. Yeah. So the yeah, so the definitely wasn't anywhere else. Yeah. The water level is actually very low. Not complaining. Oh, but it will get higher. see what is hiding under the ground, you have to commit yourself. You want to walk first so that you can see what's underneath the water? Yeah, yeah actually. Oh, no. Well, 
yes, and this one is locked. I mean blocked. It's, there's no way if there has been something further or not. I mean the wood here so might be an indication that they haven't finished building for whatever this was. Yeah. Because it's not reinforced by brick or anything. So it may have been a project. And I think this one place here was supposed to be underground train station so that the, the trolleys can actually pass over each other. Pass each other. Yeah. You know I mean the second trail was there. Yeah, this is a little this is wider, isn't it? Yeah, the, the beams, oh yeah, you'll see the beams are still here. But also these are wooden beams, not the metal ones you see in the, uh, yeah. in the World War II projects. And you also have a ceiling, like this part of the, of the ceiling is pressed in. You have this thing, you see it from the first Yeah, it's, it's not straight. Yeah, it, it is. It doesn't look nice. Yeah, but it, it doesn't look like it's collapsing though. It just doesn't look like it was built straight. Okay. Like, like this then, it, it looks like it's supposed to be there, it just mm -hmm. wasn't done very well. But, because the line is straight. What the fuck is? I think if, if that dip had been because of pressure from above, I think it would have broken the bricks off. They are actually. Are they breaking off? A little bit, the, the highest. But you don't see. No, there I can see fracture. Oh, okay. But it's a little shoddy. It's not the. It's not. Uh, like. It's, it's not Fitz Toad's best work. <laughs> and this is the room where you can actually see. There's still some coal. That's a coal. I yeah. assume. There you can see. Oh wow, it's actually closer, isn't it? But very little. Oh. So now you know why they had to support it with a yeah, no, sure. brick construction. Those black spots which you see, I assume that it's after some burning, because it looks like a burn mark. This is a dead end, right? There's nothing. Yeah. But there you can see the construction method they've been using. So that's probably an old railway. Railway. Ah, it's too rusted because all of them are marked with a year and with a symbol of who made it. Yep. It will be interesting to see because most of the times they were reusing the old ones. And there's a drill. Why the hell is there a drill? Is it a drill or is a screw? Isn't this a drill? I think it's a screw. Was, eh, yeah. I, I know what, uh, or no. The no, bolt is in no the wrong idea. place. And you know, in Poland, a steel disappears, yeah? <laughs> I know. But there you can see a symbol of the producer, it's W. But... My light is dying. Oh, it did? No, nothing. Okay, let's take a look at the collapse. I have not been there since, I would say, one or two years. And you see where is the water coming from? There and there, it's like right, a yeah. spring. Which means behind this collapse, the water is higher. And that's what I meant. That's cool. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. Oh, okay. So this is pretty crazy. I want you to get through really quick and don't stick back. They just, oh, it just collapsed that much, but this pile of the rock is actually turning into a little bit of it. Okay, the water never gets its way higher. Of course. I 
thinks it's too high, unless you want to check. Because of the continuation, it goes behind the corner and then it stops. Yeah, this looks pretty deep. How what deep is this? Oh, this is the yeah. I would say it's waist level or even a bit higher. Yeah. I can hold the camera. You can check it. How deep is it? Usually, I'm the one with the leaking wetsuit with the button missing. No, I also have a button missing. <laughs> what can go wrong with the camera? Yeah. Well, the wood still floats. See, I'm not even stable without a camera. This is a little chilly. For yeah, it's pressing. This is a really weird feeling. I think this is, I think this is it. Oops, no it's not. Alright, I need to button up more. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is getting deep. Let's keep, let's keep sloping down. Should have brought a diving suit. Yes, all the way on the what's the name of it? Kumi boat. Rubber, yeah. Rubber boat, yeah. Well, we got a little wet. Thanks God it's raining outside, so you can do that. So what to begin with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is again the entrance of a, of a, of a tunnel. You yeah, almost think that there might be some reason. Yeah. Look, you, know, you know there's a cavity above it? I know, but that's not interesting. For uh, not, to, not, to, no, not to go through, but... Probably the other part of the tunnel they had to fill in when after building this arch, and this one is prepared for further yeah, development. The, unlike the other one. Do you think there is one underneath all this rubble? There's no, 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 no. The it stops, stops, isn't it? It stops here. Yeah, and there. I guess that's part of the whole, what makes this region so interesting is yeah. you can, there are so many places underground. So that when... Has so many, that has so many question marks. It's like so when Christoph or others say they went underground somewhere, and walk for a couple of kilometers. Uh -huh. It's possible. Uh, I mean, it, it's not impossible. Like, it's not impossible, but uh, like I told you, for inexperienced people that are actually high because of the adrenaline, yeah. you know, 100 meters underground is going to take like one kilometer. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, you lose a sense of time. Yes. This is going to have to continue way longer, because why else would there be a... We can analyze it on the guitar, on yeah. the computer later on, and then maybe we'll come to some conclusions. Because I'm almost sure it goes to the direction of the main mine, and it was somehow related to that. Maybe it was the drainage tunnel that's removing the water, because as you can see from behind this collapse, the water is still coming. I think this is too elaborate. For a drainage tunnel. Yeah, but you can use a transport tunnel as a drainage too. 
And why would you have a drainage tunnel right next to the munition store, the explosive storage? And the well, the explosive storage is a little bit higher than the... Yeah, yeah. But if you built it as a drain tunnel, you, you would still wouldn't put the explosives there. Okay. You would keep, you would keep the water and explosives don't do well. Why do you think they have been leaving the empty brick? So that you can see what's behind the wall. Do you see any reason? Because I encountered it in catacombs and I asked this question and in the catacombs they were leaving it when they were filling something in because of the nature of, this, uh, of the rock. Uh, without the ventilation the rock would start to get yeah. eaten by water and now the ventilation is there so it's not. At least that was the reason in catacombs, I assume it was similar here. That makes sense. Big mine, very close to the uh, the hedge. Yeah. Uh, there is a drainage tunnel underneath the pile of the rocks. Have you been inside it? I haven't, because you have to go in from the other side. Ah, okay. You can't go in. Th if you go in through the the hedge, uh, what's the museum today? Yeah. You can't. It, that, that is bricked off. So you have to go in from the outside. Yes. If you want. Well, we have the suits, we are already kind of wet. <laughs> and if the water level is higher, then we are going to have uh, a water filter. <laughs> yeah, somebody was checking. Yeah. See that. Well, they drilled all the way through. Oh. Just a normal break. Yeah, but inside they drilled through the next bit as well. Ah, oh, yes. change brick design as with the next evolution. Maybe they couldn't afford to build more than something and then they waited a couple of years and they started up again, but they didn't have the same type of brick or something. not even a single one and now they are digging to get to those the metal is not that expensive is it uh, well actually it got a little bit more this is a mini rail mm -hmm. that's a little snail track yeah, yeah nice. Mine, Benz Laos. So this mine was one of the biggest mines of its time. It was one of the first that got electrified. But then it was also very well known from uh, the methane that was uh, hidden inside the walls and it was making the methane explosions. So there was a one big explosion. It killed a couple of hundred people underground. So for these people who were living there when there were only a couple of thousand, that was actually a quite a big thing. And after that they closed this mine. And shortly before the war, the place where is this hedge standing here, yeah? there, there, uh, there used to be a lot of uh, mine, uh, mining tunnels underground and it was acquired by, I don't remember if it was SS or the 
the government itself. But maybe there is an idea where it could go, because you have a big mine with a lot of tunnels inside deep underground, and if you just seal off the places where the methane is coming, then you can use those undergrounds without having to dig the new ones. Yeah. And they are still inaccessible, and if you would look at the pile of the rubbish rock in front of this mine, then you would see it was a big construction. This is the one they filled up, this is the vertical shaft, right? They filled them up yeah. and sealed them. Yes. Yeah. But maybe this is the place where the concrete goes. Well, that, yeah. Yes, because these were, were very deep and very large. And that is exactly where we're going now. We're going to the large dirt mountain of all that was excavated from this tunnel system, from the mines that was pulled out into a huge mountain through which a ventilation drainage seems to be running all the way back to the Henge. But before we climb through more water, let's first have a recap of what we've learned so far. From the old maps and cards we found, from before, during and after the war, it seems clear that the Henge itself was constructed between 1930 and 1942, quite possible right up around the time of the start of the war. But as a cooling tower, it seems unnecessary. Also it has come to light there's a whole lot of underground connections that may have been overlooked, including tunnels leading from the power plant past or through the Henge Basin and into new mine buildings, leaving us asking why. Also, these new buildings rapidly disappeared right after the war and do not even appear on maps or cards from the time. But we do know that the mine was not in use after the accident despite it being the cleanest coal in Germany, coal that could have been used for synthetic fuel. Now we know that the mine site was used for an explosives factory, with several thousand prisoners working there, and also that shallow tunnels were constructed throughout the area at the time. Tunnels somewhat consistent with explosives production, as we've seen elsewhere. However, if the mine was not in use, why construct a new head building and why did these old mining tunnels appear to have been used during the war and accessed? And of course, why run so much electricity through these tunnels? Even the shallow ones, we know from the places such as DAG, the huge explosive production plant, that electricity was not run through any of these places out of fear that a spark may set off an explosion. So now we return to the question, why were these shallow tunnels created, and what exactly did they lead to? You see the little speck of light down there? That's the bricked up entrance of the tunnel. On the other side is the tunnel leading into that big building. So these tunnels, I could see this all the way through to the other end. Now I don't know if this is caved in deliberately or just because of time because those tunnels were far more open when I was here just seven months ago. You clearly see there's a tunnel. This is the tunnel roof. And it is completely caved in here. Damn it. That opens a whole different can of worms. That way and that way. Right between the two buildings that still remain. You will get that with heavier boots. We had a break here. There's another division. The divisions here to originally have been red brick. Door divisions, 
from some of the photos, I remember seeing indents for hinges, and they were quite thick. Well, there would have been doors sealing these off. So if this was just a ventilation, there would not have been any doors. And even if there was doors, but did these doors break off? And these shells were the pipes where the electricity was kept. And were they excluded? So there was no type of pressure or air pressure or over pressure in that sense. Very wet in here. It does turn in under towards the hinge, but it could be skirting it just underneath. Where this tunnel is going is facing straight out this window, so that is the direction. There's the hinge, but this is the direction of this tunnel. And you see the pipes that will cross under sea, so there would never have been a rail here. And there's an access hatch with probably a step, and the ground is right above my head here. I hear more pipes that intercede across this hallway, and they're all hemorrhaging water. It has been a rather wet year, granted. And here is a collapsed access hatch, which somewhat unsafely is hovering above my head here. thinking this pipe has always been here because this groove for the wire runs under it and that doesn't look post-war. So these cable grooves incidentally are in better and better shape the further away I get. And here's the wall. Now if we follow these tunnels past the bricked up part, we'll come to a T intersection, one leading us in the direction of the hinge, the other opposite leading us away. This is the one we will try to enter from down the mountain by the bridge. The tunnel I am in now runs from the power plant through the hinge basin and behind me it runs up into the mountains, up under the new head building that was built for something yet we do not know. It couldn't have been for the Walterschacht, although this was enormous, but it had an enormous new head building constructed during the time of the war. And with such a head building, it seemed that new interest at that time for access in the deep underground was created. But these tunnels not only transported electricity, they also had large pipes flowing through the hinge basin in two directions. So if we are looking at the tunnel layouts, one disappears into the mountain and the other continues towards the huge mountain of dirt excavated from the mine, direction bridge. The exit of this we will try to enter today. 
to try to backtrack back up towards the Henge. And the other end, by the bridge, it appears as a drainage tunnel. But why would it start all the way up at the Henge, where electricity was also transported? Much for the same reason you would not transport electricity through a munitions explosives plant, you certainly wouldn't transport mountain runoff in the same tunnel as high voltage electricity, or steam from the power plant for that sake's matter. You may recognize this bridge, because that tells you that on the other side of this bridge was the labor camp. And on the other side of this mountain, some two kilometers away, one kilometer away too, is the Henge and the huge underground mines. And this is the one of the underground, this is the water runoff from the mines, or one of them. Not from the mine, from the pile of rocks in front of the mine. So this basically if we crawl through this, we get basically up to under the Henge. Yes, oh, something similar, Ish. but you have to be really crazy to use the ladder which is still there. <laughs> and have anybody, have anybody ever accused you or I of not being that crazy? Uh, no, one guy what? told me there's no way you will do it and no, then he said, uh, it, it sounds like I have to do it. But I was like, mm, because when you can remove the handles from the wall, <laughs> then it doesn't look <laughs> that bad. nice. Yeah. So, so be but, really, really, really careful because that's a quick stand. Uh-huh. Normally it's covered with, it's covered with, uh, uh, with leaks, but now the water output from here, because it's actually the source of the water. Yeah, the water is coming from here, it's not coming from the mountain, it's running from, well the road is up here, and this is where the water is coming from. And just because it looks wet around you, I have to say that it only just started raining an hour ago. So, this is not... This is not like this has been very wet. Oh fuck! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold your camera now because it's going to be. Is it recording? Yep, it's recording. Because it's going to be nice to see you struggling to. Says says you, <laughs> the guy who's struggling to. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Well, now we can take samples of. Uh... Yes. Oh, I'll just like that. Oh, you can water. see how many minerals are in the water because of the material the water is sipping through. Yeah, yeah, this is not as neat and clean as we usually see. Yeah. All right, brother. And we know this is World War II because there's a tire. <laughs> I think we will even experience the water pool underground because the water pressure, as you can see, is kind of high. And you see, you hear the air is yeah. actually uh, hitting you really hard. So yeah. probably the water level, the water in the water pool is going to be really good. It's going to hide this one. Right. Right. All right. It's so pretty nice over here. I'm glad you're enjoying the view of my ass. Yes, yes. Oh, this opens up. A lot. Yeah, just the colors on the wall are already interesting. in a mining situation place so obviously there's minerals and same things looks so nice almost hard to believe that behind this layer there's actually a brick wall yeah it really is but this is large was this always water runoff or was this tunnel something else? Only water. Then you will see at the end. It's only the water runoff. Because this pile of uh, stones is quite big. So there was a lot of water collecting from it. And I think that's easier to let the water like this than to build the river. It's very tall. Yes. I will say.
going to get only louder and louder. I think in the end we will not be able to understand each other. I figure. Oh yeah, this is like a water ladder. This is a... Yeah, this is a... Yeah. This is all like water. The little plateaus. And dead animals. That's what he said they did up at, uh, at the Nobel, at the plant. They built the tunnels and then they covered them up. The above ground ones. They didn't uh, do it the other way around. They didn't dig into the ground. shortly go in this direction because I think there was another portal. I never checked it. Oh 
look at this. <laughs> it's like the Orange River. Oh hell yeah. Well. Oh yes, there's the portal. I was right. And it's actually open. Ah, but it's only a basement, I think. Full of a garbage. Oh. So I saw it correctly. Yeah, you can see the back wall. Okay. Oh. So it was only a basement. So why would there be a room here? Just storage, something, something, I something, no something idea. else? Because, yeah, it's the neighborhood of the, of the big mine. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. This is the remains of one of the mine buildings. And over here is the Walter Tunnel that has been sealed, that entrance. And what was interesting about the Walter Tunnel is it was very, very large. And there was a building constructed in relation to it during the war, if we are to look at photos and plans. But there was no mining taking place during the war. And afterwards, that very large building disappeared rather rapidly. Here's the road up behind the henge. And this is the very, very long row of munitions buildings leading all the way down that hall. And here was one of the old mining buildings. If this was a munitions plant, it makes perfect sense. A square where you would have materials and you would load. Now, cooling tower? I'm okay with the cooling tower. The interesting part about the cooling tower is there was supposedly cooling pipes leading from it to various different parts other than the power plant. Which brings the question is why would you lead cooling pipes away from the power plant to some of the mine entrances? Which brings us to what would you cool in a closed mine? And there? What the hell is this? What the hell is in there? I can get in here. Oh, yeah. It's my And... So we got... God damn it. To collapse tunnel. Let's see what's in there. Whoa. Whoa. That's a serious tunnel. That's a serious fucking tunnel. I was so happy there for a minute, but here you see how the tunnels split inside, change directions, and collapse that way, collapse that way. So there's also an elevation to these. Yeah, let's see, look at the bricks. This is an archway. This will be a step down here, just like here. Well, and it would have continued. Special. All right, out again. Now this all brings us back to the recurring question, was the henge constructed as a cooling tower for the factory? As the power plant already had several existing huge cooling towers, and they did not modernize or upgrade their machinery at this time, so why would they need another cooling tower? And of course, if it was a cooling tower, it would need a connection to the henge. This I found, and want to show you again because it matters in this context. Up here is the henge, the munitions plant, and here's the remaining wall of the power plant. Old beautiful building. Indications are that the cooling tower was built early on throughout the time of the war. And here's what I'm looking for, um, but not put in use. 
because if it was put in use, well, what would need cooling? Here are the two holes I wanted to show you. And of course, you are now asking yourselves, why are these two holes important? Let me explain. The two holes you see up behind me leads into the boiler room of the power plant. That's important because straight that way behind camera is the hinge, the cooling tower. Those are the two pipes that would lead water straight in the direction of the hinge. This is where the water that would need cooling would go out through these two holes in pipes, elevated pipes, straight up to the hinge, into the cool, into the pond, into the cooling pond underneath the hinge. That's where the water would go, come and go. So, hinge, cooling tower, access to the factory, to the boiler room, makes sense. Elevated platform right here. However, that makes it interesting. They did not modernize the power plant during the war, but they built an enormous cooling tower. There already were several cooling towers, one down there, one over here. We have pictures of, we know where they are, or were. Why would you build a large cooling tower for an existing power plant, make access to it, unless you needed something more cooled than just from the power plant that was already existing and running on the existing cooling tower. What makes it even more interesting is we now have photos that are indicating that cooling hoses would run to, for instance, the Walther mine shaft down here. So if you have a hinge that is a cooling tower or was supposed to be a cooling tower, to the point where you laid infrastructure for cooling hoses to the factory, to the power plant, but also to the mine shafts. Why on earth are you running cooling tubes to mine shafts? You travel right behind me, right up there, above the wall is what remains of a pillar, support pillar, that would have or could have held those pipes. I'm not saying these two enormous pipes sitting right here next to the hinge are a part of that connection, but there are two very large pieces of pipe sitting right here coming down from the hinge. Here is an outcropping that could cover pipes that would lead into the ground right into well, not quite the bathroom. The two holes right there, lining up the power plant behind. And if you look at this old picture from the 70s of the water pool and the hinge, between all the rods, you see a small hole. Probably not that small, probably about the diameter of the pipes laying next to it. I think this proves the intent that the hinge was planned as a cooling tower. Although far larger than others around, and there was a pipe connection to the power plant, but also a pipe and tunnel connection in the other direction towards the new head buildings over the abandoned mine shaft. And an exceptional amount of dedicated work have been done in order to seal off these mine shafts three, four hundred meters deep into the old mines. So the best chance we actually have of finding our way into the mine shafts in some way today is to find some of these shallow constructed tunnels or old mine tunnel entrances, follow them in and see where it leads us. Today it was simply too wet, but next year with some diving gear we can continue that journey. I still do feel that it is the best bet we have of finding the truth and getting into the underground. And of course we're far from done with the underground of Project Riese. Not more than some thousand meters away is the Riese project site that was supposed to be allocated to Himmler and the SS. We'll take a look at that next week. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebmus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. 
I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.